there you are. You are you are back. We should say because you were. Yeah, this is my uh, second time. Yeah, they were not here then. No, <laughs> no, In the, not many guests can say they can uh, come a second time. Yeah, it's a big compliment, eh? Yeah, that, uh, that they invited me back. Yeah, but uh, you, ne you never know with these guys what's going to happen, eh? No, <laughs> no, no. Um, we uh, uh, have of course questions prepared, but um, our first question is. Uh, what did you think when you saw the news yesterday? When I what? When you saw the news yesterday. News, yeah, I see news all the time, but what, but, but what news exactly do you mean? About Ajax. Uh, they apparently, um, this summer, had a transfer manager, Milos Malinovic, uh, who handled transfers for Ajax, but the board of the club was not aware of any oh? deals he might have made uh, for his personal gain. Now that is something I don't know. I tell you something. No, new. I didn't. I didn't, re I didn't read well. that. So uh, <laughs> you, you're telling me news. What is your first reaction? Well, in these things, um, that with everything, uh, you need to investigate first whether it is true. Yeah. I learned in my career that never uh, immediately believe what you read, mm. um, uh, because sometimes. Journalists, they hear something, uh, first it's news, and they put yeah. it on, especially now they put it on the internet, uh, and then later on it proves out to be a little bit different. Well, so e even if I would have read it, but I honestly didn't, okay. then uh, I, uh, I would say, okay, let, let's find out, let's check it first. Let them do an investigation. Ajax is currently uh, hi hired an outside firm oh? to investigate uh, how this was possible. Now, okay, so that is very good. That's a good decision. So let's wait for the result. Yeah. And then you can ask me back, and <laughs> then I will answer the question. <laughs> I'm, I'm so surprised no, it's, you yeah, no, no, yeah. were uh, Listen, uh, I do other things. Yeah. I was abroad, and uh, yesterday uh, <coughs> I had to take care of my wife and my daughter because they went skiing, so I went to the yeah. airport. Also important. And yesterday evening I did other things, so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see it, sorry. No problem. Maybe one general question uh, to top it off uh, about this subject. Um, back when you were the chair of Ajax, uh, could you ever imagine yourself hiring an, an outside uh, spelersmakelaar to handle transfers for Ajax? No, we didn't. Uh, we, there was a guy called Rob Janssen. Rob Janssen, who, yeah, very Rob famous. Rob Janssen is, uh, is a Dutch uh, players agent. Yeah. And uh, we, did, we did a lot of business with him because he, he had a lot of players in his... Uh, he, he represented a lot of players, but the choice of having uh, the, ploys, the, the choice of having a players agent lies with the players, yeah. and not with uh, with the club. Mm. So if there is a player I want to, I want to have, but he has a different uh, players agent, okay, I have to deal with that guy, and then Rob Janssen stayed out. Yeah, yeah. but we never had something. Uh, we never hired somebody, no. or uh, not so on. No. No. But you have players' agents who visit you all the time because they have their players and they want their players to play in Ajax. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah of that, course. That happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, but the other way around you've never seen before? No. Okay. Hmm. Well, uh, that was, I think, uh, an interesting start. Then we move on to... to I get hope to you have more questions because <laughs> <laughs> this was... <laughs> this was the interview, ah, guys. Uh, <laughs> sorry, yeah. <laughs> Um, I think it's a good view. Yeah, um, I think to start, we actually want to get your life story. So we want to bring you all the way back to the beginning and how it started. Um, what was the Amsterdam you grew up in like? What was the football industry back then? Um, <coughs> I, uh, I grew up in, in, uh, in Amstelveen, which is a small place outside of Amsterdam. And my father was a member of Ajax. So he took me to Ajax since I was seven or eight. And in the in end of the 90s, he became the chairman of Ajax as well. And for your information, there are a lot of clubs where, where the, 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 the club is owned by a person. So you might think that the Van Praag family uh, <laughs> has owned Ajax, yeah. but that is not the case. Ajax is just a club, and uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a chairman or a president, you are elected. Mm. So my father was also elected uh, in, um, in, in those days. And at that time, I was a referee. So I was not too much interested in Ajax. But um, now and then I went to the big matches. But I noticed uh, from him when he came home, came home 
that in, in those days it was, um, uh, it was a little bit easier to run a club because we didn't have social media yet, as an example. Yeah. And if something happens now, it immediately, immediately goes viral. Hmm. And, so, and then people already have their opinion before exactly knowing what's going on. And um, I think communication and especially television uh, did a lot for the development of football and uh, also in Holland, but in the whole world. I think uh, in the book uh, that, that was written about you uh, by, uh, by Willem Vissers, um, there's also hey, talk about um, the family you grew up in. As you said, your father had a uh, music store, I think, at Spuizes. And um, um, <coughs> he and uh, your mother um, later divorced. Um, and this was, uh, I think, not common at the time. And it, it describes how you had to be, yeah, in between them all the time. Huh? Um, sailing through and, and making sure you didn't uh, step on the wrong foot of people. Yeah. Well, I'm not a marriage counselor, I tell you that. But I have some experience. Nowadays, uh, if, if people are married, they can easily, or easily, yeah, you, you can divorce. Mm -hmm. Because you can come to the conclusion that it doesn't work out or whatsoever, and then you divorce. But in, in, in the time where I lived, that was not the case. Yeah. You could only divorce when there was somebody else. Yeah. Okay? You fell in love with somebody else, and you were having sex with somebody else, and then that was a reason to, uh, to divorce. And that happened. And um, it was not very nice because my parents, uh, they quarreled a lot. And yeah, they no, no, they quarreled a lot. It, it, it says uh, that, that it was quite a fight. Yeah, yeah it was quite a in, fight. In, in court, even. Exactly, it was quite a fight. A yeah. fight, And they went to court because the fight was for the children. Mm. Where will so the children go? You. And you hear that now and then as well, uh, that people don't accept eh, that, that the, 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 the children stay with their mother. Mm. We even hear sometimes on the news nowadays that uh, uh, fathers or mothers kidnap their own kids, mm. bring them mm. to another country, but that was not that bad. But okay, yeah, toen, uh, in, in those days, uh, we had to, we had, it was not easy, we, yeah. had, we had to choose. And at the end of the day, when I was 13, I was allowed to make a choice, and then uh, I chose to live with my mother. But it also has to do that they are, that they, uh, it, it was, rather shortly after the Second World War. Eh? Mm. And don't forget what the war does with people. And my father has been locked up in a, in a room uh, to hide from the Germans for five years uh, in the overtome on the, on the, first, uh, on the first floor. Mm. And if you live like that, um, then, then something happens with you. And, yeah. and you are determined, your, 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 relax, your reactions on uh, things in the world, but also on your on your partners are different. So I think that had to do, also had to do with it. Because when I read that, I thought, in a way, that is a, a great education, so, so to say, in how to uh, handle and, and uh, navigate in very difficult situations. No, yeah, that's right. That's true. Uh, we had to do that. So uh, as, as a child, I, I already had my, gained my experience. Uh, yeah for later issues that I had to deal with. Did it also emotionally scar you? No, my, more, my sister more, Good. not me. I mean, no, no, no. And as you already touched upon, you had quite a complex relationship with your father, and later you went on to become a referee. Yeah. Uh, in a large part due to him. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? About the refereeing? About your career as a referee, yes. Well, yeah, you see, I, I can't play football. I, 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 I have nothing with the ball. I tried, to, uh, I tried for two weeks, and then they were glad that I left. And uh, later on, I tried golf, because I thought golf is nice, because the ball lies still. <laughs> yeah, doesn't move. <laughs> doesn't move. More, more convenient. Yeah. Doesn't help. So uh, I wanted to do something with football, and um, and so I thought, why not become a referee? Mm. It is in my it, it is in my my character to unite people, and I thought I like it. So when I was 16, I became a referee, and I did that for uh, for 16 years, and I loved it. But I was not a good uh, I was not good enough to become a, a professional. But what I learned as a referee. Yeah is to deal with emotional people, yeah. uh, awkward people, people who, who, 
who are not sporty, et cetera, et cetera. So you get a wide experience to, to, to deal with people when you're a referee. Because you, you consistently pick the roles in soccer that get you the most of cr amount of criti cr criticism. The most? The most amount of criticism. Yeah. Why? Well, uh, as a referee, I didn't get that much uh, criticism. I, ha I had to run for my life only once, and that was in Utrecht. Uh, that was all. But, um, yeah, you know, um, I run the company at Schiphol Airport. Uh, we had 400 people of staff. I think uh, I I'm a self-made person on that, so I think I can, can very well manage people. Uh, but in... Uh, for instance, if you fire somebody in your company, no, nah, you fire somebody and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. yeah? you, uh, but if you fire something in, as a football, as, a, as the director of a football club, or the chairman of a football club, or the chairman of, of a federation, it's in the newspapers even before you know it. That's, th and that's awful. So I, I always compare uh, uh, being a chairman of a football club or a federation as a reversed car wash. You go in clean and you uh, and you get out dirty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and nine well, out of ten times that is the case. We'll talk but about not that in me, uh, not a, a, a little bit more later because uh, I think you encountered some people who uh, had yeah. that. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's uh, after all these career tryouts, so to say, it was very interesting how you became the chairman of Ajax. Yeah. We actually read in the book that you were in the birthday party. Yeah. And next day you were the chairman. Uh, listen, I was refereeing and I stopped uh, refereeing when I was 32 because I wanted to continue playing in my band. Hmm. I play in bands my whole life, parties, m weddings, etc. Very nice. And um, the problem there is uh, when you play in a band, uh, you get home at night at five o'clock in the morning. Uh, because you did your gig, and then you go to bed, and then next day you have to, to referee a match, and you cannot, you can't continue doing that, especially not. I was uh, refereeing in the second division of the amateurs, so that's rather high. So I thought it was not responsible to do it. Hmm. So I, I left, uh, I stopped refereeing, and in those, those ten years afterwards, I was completely uninterested in football. I never watched it anymore. No, no, no. B before you became chair, you were like nine years not in the state. Exactly. No. So uh, um, <coughs> I heard that in Ajax they needed it, they needed a president, mm. and I'm the kind of guy uh, who always uh, jumps into the empty swimming pool, as I call it, yeah. without water, and then I see what happens. So I thought, hey, chairman of Ajax. My father was chairman of Ajax. That would be nice. Why? Uh, yeah, yeah. Why? I don't know why. No, but, well, uh, well but, but, but <laughs> I, I suppose at the time you had an idea. Yeah, yeah. because in Ajax it was also a mess uh, uh, in the end, uh, in, in 89, 1989. Mm. And I always liked to jump in uh, somewhere where it is a mess. Why? Why? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so... so I, you I do that and then I want to make something out of it, clean things up. Do, does that give the most amount of satisfaction? Sorry? Does that give the most amount of satisfaction when you of see course. a mess and you clean it up and then? Of course, that gives a, a lot of satisfaction. So Ajax, I didn't, I never had that in mind, and then, then I heard that I couldn't. But I'm, I'm an Ajax fan, but not active. And then I heard that they couldn't find a, a, a president, and there were already three who said no. And my father was also fourth choice in the 70s, and I'm also the fourth choice. And, and, and uh, I already informed, uh, asked them, uh, how are you doing? And no, we can't find somebody. And at the end, they said, w they think you are too young. I was 41. Mm. So it was out of the question that I would become the chairman, the president. And then I went to a birthday party. And there, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to, but I did. Because I didn't want to disappoint my friend who had his birthday. If I wouldn't have gone, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't have been sitting here. So I went, and there was somebody who was already in the board as a commercial man. And he said, Michael, why, why don't you become uh, the, the president of Ajax? He U said, Uri you, Coronel. Yeah, Uri Coronel. You have experience. I said, I have no experience at all. Yeah, but you, <laughs> but, <laughs> no, no. But you <laughs> like, but you you like up, football. Yeah. You yeah. Like, I said, yes, but they say I'm too young. Mm. And then he said, bullshit. You are 41, I'm 42. 
Mm. They asked me to yeah. become the president, and I don't want to do that job. Mm -hmm. So crazy. So he went upstairs to the to the sleeping room, and he made a phone call. And two weeks later, I was the president of Ajax, and wow. I had no wow. experience at all. Uh, experience at all, and um, I could manage a, a company, yes, yeah. but in a football club, no. And the 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 secret. Well, it's not a secret because I always say it. I know nothing about football. And then you say he's, 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 he's joking. No, I don't. When I hear about systems, when I hear about three, what is it, four, three, two, or... Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm not interested. I want to manage a club. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I know everything about football, and you, uh, about uh, uh, refereeing, and you can ask me anything about the VAR, yeah. the VAR, yeah. but because that is my interest. And, I and when I watch a match, I always look at the match through the eyes of the referee observer. Yeah, and, and yeah. Uh, according to the book, half of the time on your phone. Half of the time on the phone, yeah. <laughs> then I'm, I'm texting. That's fascinating. <laughs> and then I hear, hey, Michael, it's 1-0. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. But, yeah. but my interest is in running a company. Yeah. yeah. So wow. running a club, running a federation, that is my interest. Mm. And make sure that you have a vision for the future and try to work that out. That is what I like. But football, I remember the first match was a away match against Emmen. It's far up north, in northeast. And after 20 minutes, I was looking at my, uh, at my watch and I said, my God, <laughs> another 25 minutes and then another 45 minutes. Wow. <laughs> But that, along the road, that changed. Mm. And I became uh, very nervous in the beginning for every match and then I needed um, pills to calm down yeah because that yeah. is so strange with me yeah. eh? in the beginning I, I, I was not interested in the game Do you but think once you're once you have your match every week yeah. and Ajax was in a mess eh? in 1989 we didn't send Christmas cards because we wanted to save 800 guilders yeah we didn't have the money for it wow. so I thought hey this has to change Ajax must become the Real Madrid of Holland. So we must work at the future of the club. And I, I, yeah, I dive into that and I don't let loose. I, I, wanna, I want that to happen. So that is my interest. So, sorry, and then I come. But then, then when you have your match every day, you also want, st you start to get the feeling that you want to win. Mm. And I got nervous. Every match again, nervous, nervous, nervous. So I went to the doctor, he said, you should have Inderal. Inderal is a small pill, and it reduces the adrenaline in your body. You took medication to... Absolutely. And I started with one, but you know how it is with a painkiller as well. After a while, one is not enough. So I... I did, did you become addicted? I had two. <laughs> and then I had three. And then there was this match, and I was sitting like this, eh, on the stand. So make yourself. And then my the, the treasurer always sit next to me and said, Michael, why are you sleeping? It's already 3-0. I didn't notice it. So then I thought, you're crazy. So you quit I, the pill. I immediately quit. quit taking these pills. And uh, so I'm a strange, a strange person. And you yeah. still had the same performance despite the pills? Sorry? And you still could perform the same despite the pills? What do you mean? Uh, like, as you said, you had the pills to deal with everything. Yeah. And then after the pills, uh, how has your experience? No, changed? I only took them on Sunday. Oh, only on Sunday. When the match okay. was, and the next day not. No, so but I, I stopped doing that after oh. two, three months because it was no. crazy. It was ridiculous. No. That is such a fascinating st story of, without like, actually playing football and like being into that, uh, becoming a management position. Do you think you could have ever been in the same position without your father? Being in the role that he if, was. If I could be in the same position? Being the chairman of Ajax without your father? Without my father. Yeah, if your father was a different person. No, yeah, my father didn't live. He, he died already. Uh, so he didn't, he doesn't know what happened with me afterwards. But um, uh, if I understand your question well, you ask, could you ever have been a, a president of Ajax without your father? Is that what you say? Yes, if your father didn't have the same influence in football as he did. No, I mean, if, if my father, no, I don't think so. Uh, my father took me to Ajax as a, as a supporter, so I went there as a supporter. Mm -hmm. And I never uh, thought of uh, following him in the way he 
he because w w when you took the job, your goal was not uh, I'm going to do better than my father. No. Okay, you wanted to be, do bad. Uh, I want to do. I want to. Do, I want to do it my way. My, your way. Yeah. What was the diff biggest difference management ch style between you and your father? It was almost impossible to beat my father because he he was such a popular guy. He he is a very good uh, joke teller. He tells jokes all the time. Uh, when he would have been here, he would have started telling everybody the latest Amsterdam joke. Uh, that that yeah. is the way he was, and he he could solve he, he s could solve things with. With with a joke and with being and and and, and yeah. with, I couldn't. I'm but, more I'm more serious. But but still, if you look at your career, like you 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 also were in in had the store business in the and uh, in retail, and you also hey, were chair of Ajax and then chair of KVB. So you more or less took like the same roads he did. Yeah, because once you're once you're in uh, once once you start in football, yeah, the chances of continuing in football are big. Okay. Yeah? And, and, and that's why I run from one job into the other. But I saw it as a job. Hmm. I, I, I saw it as a job. I Not as a calling? No. Okay. Um, the man you encountered at the birthday party, his name was U Uri Coronel. And when you started at Ajax, he had a few um, commercial IDs. So, building the Amsterdam Arena, the IPO of Ajax, and the revolutionary ABN AMRO sh shirt sponsorship. Exactly. <coughs> if he wouldn't have been there, um, would we see Ajax in the same <coughs> commercial giant uh, it is today? Everybody, hoe zeg ik dat even, niemand is onvervangbaar. Nobody is replaceable. Nobody is irreplaceable. If I wouldn't have been there, Ajax would also flourish. Because mm. the fortunate thing of Ajax is that they're a big, they have, they have a talented school with big talents. So Ajax will always be at the, at the top level. Um, that same goes for commercial. But Uri, yeah, Uri is the is the, had the thoughts of the of the Amsterdam Arena, and he was the yeah. big promoter of it. And Uri also had uh, the idea of the bank, and but that was what he was for. He had to do that. I, I had a different portfolio. My portfolio was supporters. So I established a new supporters club, for instance. I established together with him a business club. Those things we did all together. But um, no, there will always be other people. Mm. And without me, Ajax would have been uh, just as big. Yeah. And to this day, uh, Ajax is the only Dutch football team to have uh, an IPO. Why do you think that is? What is an IPO? Uh, a stock market list. Oh, stock yeah. market. Okay, sorry, folks. Uh, <laughs> I told you I know nothing about it. No, uh, I tell you I mean, why that you, was. You, I tell you why that you, was. You did the gong, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 okay, yeah okay, no. okay, okay. Just to make so sure. We start. We started with a, with a bad situation. Yeah. We didn't send Christmas cards the first year, but we needed more money, hmm. yeah? and we we got the ABN Emro a sponsor. Not, and that doesn't mean that all our problems were gone because they, they cannot. Okay, they sponsor for a certain amount per year, but that's it. Mm. But that is not enough to, to build up something. And, um, um, uh, sorry, I'm going to be quiet. Uh, you were telling about ABN AMRO and then getting them on the shirt? Oh, yeah. So uh, the ABN AMRO was, uh, was the first, first step to, um, to, to gain more trust, uh, more trust in, in, in the world of football. Mm. And after the ABN AMRO, others came, and so step by step, we could we could uh, uh, improve our income. Mm. But the, the, there is also another genius in Ajax, and it was Ari van Os, mm. the, the treasurer, mm. because he was the guy in charge of the, con the players' contracts. Yeah. And the players' contracts are the most important thing in the club. And the players are the most important people because they have to score the goals. Yeah, not me. Yeah, and and the way he the way he changed the structure of contracts and the way he made sure that Ajax could earn more money when players left the club, that comes from him. Yeah, something you did by yourself was keeping Louis van Gaal inside Ajax. Yeah, that is the, that is the task of the chairman. And um, could you maybe first tell uh, tell us how you did that because we all know yeah. Louis van Gaal. Uh, raise your hand if you think he he is a uh, an easy man to handle. 
He's a what? A few laughs. I, I asked, uh, do you guys think he's easy to handle, Louis van Gaal? And, you, and no hands were raised. You seem to be one of the only people uh, I've read about who seems to know uh, uh, how, how he ticks. How? And how does this guy tick? Louis van Gaal is, uh, is the, one of the nicest people I know. In Holland we say it is somebody with a little heart, which means he's very emotional. He can be very personal. Hmm. And um, I liked him from the beginning when he, was, uh, when he was assistant trainer in Ajax. And the problem in those days was, uh, I know how to convince people. Mm. That is one of my strengths. It doesn't always work out, but... And he wanted to leave because he had been assistant for many years and he wanted to... Be his own man. He wanted to become a, a, a main manager, a main trainer. And we had Leo Benacker in those days. And Leo Benacker, well, he still had a contract. But he already signed the contract for two, three years. But we knew that Leo might not stay so long. So one day we were having a match in uh, a training camp in Turkey and we were making a, a stroll with the whole team. And then I said, Louis, may I ask you something? Uh, uh, um, and then he said to me, uh, he said to me, uh, I want to leave, Michael. I want to, I want to do it on my own. I said, and then I tried to convince him and successfully convinced him to stay with Ajax. And it was a little lie from my side because, okay, okay. Yeah, because we already had a, had, had a, had a contract uh, with um, with uh, Leo Benacker, mm. and the lie was that uh, I couldn't promise him that it would be soon. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I told him it somewhere in the it, future. It won't have, yeah. Somewhere in the future. Okay. In the near future, I said, but I didn't know that. Yeah. But I knew for sure that he would be a fantastic manager. Okay. So he became the manager, mm. and then we, uh, we we became friends. Yeah, and you won. Almost every prize. Yeah, you? because Louis van Gaal is the the best, uh, the biggest, and the best team builder we have in the, maybe even in the world. So, so he made not only a team out of his football team, but also with us. Mm. And um, to give you an example, when we won the the, the uh, Europa Cup, the, the Champions League yeah. in '95, yeah. the first thing he did is taking the, the the cup, put it on the on the on the washing machine. Yeah. And he said the cup stays here for a whole week. Because the, the lady and the gentleman who, who do the washing are also part of the team. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. We're all part of the team. So yeah. it's also your cup, he said. Great. Yeah. And that's the way how he... How he uh, Interacts with people. Yeah, uh, and uh, how he can motivate people and how he involves people. Okay. And we became close friends and even till today we see each other often and uh, our wives are in contact and he's, okay. a, he's a real nice guy. I'll ask one more question, then it's your guy's turn. So think of questions you want to ask to Mr. Van Praag. Um, one last question. What is the biggest misunderstanding uh, that surrounds Louis van Gaal? Well, the biggest misunderstanding is, well, people judge him on his press conferences. Hmm. Huh? And uh, partly I understand that. Partly it is his own fault that things go okay. like it is. Yeah. But he is the kind of guy he doesn't like because of his attitude, and a lot of Dutch journalists become personal. That's, all, that's, a, that's, that's a Dutch habit anyway hmm. for a sports journalist. They always become uh, personal. They don't just say, you're not a good trainer, but they also say, um, you're a bad person. Yeah. Because you don't do this. You don't. That's, that happens in Holland. And he absolutely dislikes that. Yeah. So what he's going to do, He's going to fight that, that, that attitude. And th then you get the press conference that we see. So we see him at his worst in the press conference? No, you don't see him at his worst because everything what he does is pre-calculated. He, 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 he always knows what he's doing. Mm. And sometimes it is good for the team that he argues with the media. And then he builds uh, okay, a common yeah. enemy so there's also an, always an ID behind him. There's always an ID behind him. And uh, the last in, in, in the last tournament, uh, he was very relaxed. And the press conference were, were very relaxed, yeah. more, more, uh, more to the point. And then the media al also start to complain because there's nothing to fight anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's never good. It's never good. No. But as a human being, mm. great, fantastic person. Fantastic. Let's move on to the audience questions. Who has a question for Mr. Van Praag? 
yes. the sensor. Julia will come to oh, you. The microphone, yeah. Hi, thank you. Um, so you had a past in WAFE, obviously you were vice president and you had interactions with big people like Seb Blatter or Ceferin and like, yeah. um, lately obviously there's been a, a very big stand by Ceferin against the Super League and the creation of that in football. Yeah. Uh, but recently I've read in the news about Agnelli, the now former um, president of Juventus, yeah. arguing that, well nowadays the WAFE is not doing enough to guarantee smaller teams like nowadays like Ajax or Club Bruges or Benfica who create very good football to you know, win tournaments like the Champions League, and that the financial situation of UEFA is not guaranteeing the smaller clubs to be able to compete. So my question is, do you see a football future in which the Super League is a valid alternative to the UEFA system? The Super League is, a, is, an, uh, is a, in my opinion, a league of selfish clubs. The thing is that uh, people say, yeah, UEFA, uh, UEFA is getting rich out of the Champions League. Well, listen to me. The, the UEFA charges 5% of the total turnover. And for that 5%, they have people who organize the matches. They pay the referees. They pay the uh, delegates. They pay everything. Uh, uh, so that is point one. Point two, the Super League. Um, let, let's put it this way. Why do they want the Super League? If you get, let's say, 1,500 euro per month, but you spend 2,000 per month, then very soon you have a problem. So what are you doing then? And that the same goes for a, cost, for a company. Eh? They cut costs. That is what you do. Not these clubs. These clubs don't want to cut costs because they want to, to, to invest in an even more expensive player, and not one, but two, three, four, five. So what they want is they want more money to serve their needs. Now, uh, the winner of the Champions League gets around between uh, 70 and 80 million uh, 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 euro, euro per year. And for those clubs, that is not enough. They want more. Another thing is that the UEFA competitions have a, have a solidarity component, which means that uh, a, a, a lot of, uh, a, a rather interesting percentage is paid out to all clubs in Europe for solidarity. So even Dutch clubs who never play in the Champions League or the Europa League get paid out of these competitions. And that is the task of UEFA, not to only uh, promote football of 60 wealthy uh, clubs or all the Premier League clubs who already have 150, 000, 150 million pounds per year, but to promote the whole of football, to make sure that clubs in your countries and also in Holland, that they can have amateur clubs with youth education, to give young people a chance to become a star. And that is part of the, of the job of UEFA and every federation. Now, these big clubs who want the Super Cup, they don't give a damn. What they want is to have every year this competition and uh, to make more money out of it. Now, the clubs we're talking about already play every year in the Champions League. So I don't see why they want to... Uh, uh, yeah, I do see why they want to have the Super League because uh, uh, they have been told that they can get about, uh, what is it, 250 million per year. But that has never been put on paper. Eh? That is only promised by, uh, by commercial, uh, by commercial uh, uh, entities. Another uh, disadvantage of the Super League is, will be that um, they're going to charge even more television money. So the big uh, television broadcasters, they will go for the Super League, which means they have left money left for local competitions. So the Eredivisie in Holland and every competition in, in, in the rest of Europe will suffer because the TV companies, the broadcasters, will not pay the contracts they do now. Um, besides, um, uh, it's only Juventus and Real Madrid who are trying to do this, and Barcelona, and that's it. And, and we will see if they succeed, because um, they went to, uh, to the European Court of Justice. Because UEFA say, if you do that, uh, and the FIFA, if you, do the, if you play in that competition, we no longer allow you to play in our competitions. Now, they want to fight that, so uh, I think uh, before summer, we will get a verdict of the, of, mm. of the, 
of the court, and then we will see what happens. So I'm, I'm, I'm strongly, in, in the sake of football, uh, for the sake of football, I'm, I'm strongly against it. And what they say is that, yeah, we give a chance to every club to compete. No, nah, only 60. Uh, and, in, and, and nowadays we also have the Conference League, which makes it possible for, for even clubs out smaller countries to play European football. And the, the, the spicy thing about this whole Super League thing is that the new format of the Champions League, would, which will come into place in 2024, that's next year, has been approved by them. As a matter of fact, they were also sitting at the drawing table, mm. all these clubs. And, and, missed, and, and the chairman of Juventus was the chairman of the European Club Association. Agnelli. Who, 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 who talks to UEFA about it. So it's a, it's, it's a scam. You gave some interviews after the Super League uh, announcement and you were very angry at, at Agnelli. Yeah, Agnelli, he's a, yeah, he's a crook. A crook. A crook. <laughs> Say what for and, the people and, in the back. Yeah, 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 she's writing it down and that's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I tell, I tell you why. Why? He was in charge of the European Club Association. And to make a long story short, the board of the super of the European uh, uh, Club Association unanimously agreed with the new format of 2024, including him. Mm. He signed. Yes. So he was in, in agreement with the new uh, 2024 uh, competition. Okay. Then what happened? Um, on a Saturday, the president of the UEFA, Alexander Seferin, Seferin, he rode by car from Slovenia to the head office of UEFA. And he got a phone call from a journalist. And the journalist said, Mr. Seferin, uh, you're going to, to the, the, there are rumors that there's something going to happen, that uh, the, the ideas of a Super League are still alive, mm. and uh, they, they're going to announce something. Mm. But he didn't know exactly what it was. So, Alexander Cheferin called Agnelli, the chairman of the European Club. He would know. He said, uh, he said listen, um, <coughs> uh, I heard this and this rumor that um, uh, the clubs, including your club, are going to announce a Super League. No, that's not true, and that's bullshit, and don't believe it, and, <laughs> and that's not the case. Okay. So Alexander said, okay, let's draw a, a press statement then all together, uh, mm. together and put that on, uh, put that on, the, on, on the news. Uh, okay, and then uh, Agnelli said, okay, you ask somebody to draft, to draft a proposal yeah. and then you call me back after 45 minutes. Yeah. Alexander did and after 45 minutes he tried to call Agnelli and Agnelli had shut off his phone. <laughs> <laughs> completely reached. He was not no longer to be reached. And at 12 o'clock that evening, when everybody is, was asleep, then they announced the, bo uh, the, the birth of the of the Super League. So this is this is fo uh, how do you call it? Fa false spell? For, uh, yeah, he cheated. Cheating. This is yeah. cheating. Cheating of the first degree. So now, yeah, and then fortunately, <laughs> fortunately, uh, everybody was surprised that it was going to happen. Mm. And then, um, uh, thanks to supporters groups in the, the whole world, whole, uh, yeah. and also every federation who knew the story, uh, how it was, they protested. Yeah. But then it was, it was uh, cancelled immediately after two days. Did you speak to him afterwards? No, because we can't get, get hold of him. And now, <laughs> and, and now but I'm talking of a guy who has been suspended by the Italian Football Federation for two years mm -hmm. yeah. because of cheating with the, with the, with, with the figures of the club. Mm. That's, th that's, kind of, that's, that's him. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, so Juventus has big problems. It's no think. use talking to him because he has been suspended. Mm. Now, we will see what happens. Yeah. Okay, great question. Um, any more great questions from the audience? There in the back, yes. Thank you. Uh, so I actually, sort of similar to you, I, uh, I'm just not interested in football at all. I really uh, that's not why, into it. That's why you look so good. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> because you don't have worries. <laughs> well, there's basketball too in March Madness. Oh, yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> but I'm curious, um, 
throughout your whole experience, what would you say makes a really good team? What makes a really good team? Yes. Um, well, at first I think um, it is very necessary that the organization of the club yeah, or the organization of the, of, of the company is, ri is very rightly, is rightly structured. And you've got to make sure that um, uh, uh, it's very important for, for everybody here in this room in the future, but also for me uh, as, as the chairman of a club to know what you're not good at. You've got to know what you're not good at. You're not good at everything. I'm not good at everything either. So I knew very well, and I'm starting to answer your question, I knew very well what I'm not good at. So I surrounded myself with people who f could fill in the gap. Mm. I, know, I don't know much about finance. Yeah, I can read the balance sheet. And I, I knew about the finance of my company, but, but, but not in the football club. And there are, ma there are many other, other things. So you form as, a, as, as, a, as an organization a team when you know exactly what you're not good at, it, at, but also what others are not good at. And then you help each other to become better. Now, and um, <coughs> uh, the same goes for, goes for a football team. You have to make sure that the organization behind the team, that's where you start as a, as a manager of a club, is well. That you have good, uh, good physicians, that you have uh, a good hospital to, a hospital to help you, that you have the best trainers, that you give education. Uh, for instance, we have, um, we have all our youngsters go to school, and we have teachers who come to the club and help them with their homework and everything, and then they can concentrate to uh, co can concentrate on football. And um, <coughs> this is very important in a team, and that's what I learned from Louis van Gaal, that. Um, uh, every player knows exactly what the skills of another player are. Mm. To give you an example, if you have a right winger and you want to give him a pass, there are right wingers who are very fast in the first four meters. They have their speed. But there are also people who need more time and who are only at high, at high speed after six meters. So if you want to give him a pass, you've got to know exactly where to place the ball in, order, in, order, in other words, to, that, that he doesn't have to make a strange move to get hold of the ball. Now, if you train on that, and if you train on, uh, and, and, and you, are, you have players who are willing to serve the team, then you get a good team. And um, <clears throat> as I told you uh, what happened in Ajax, even I was responsible for the media, even uh, uh, the trainer uh, was angry at me if I had said uh, something in the, in, the, in, the, in the newspaper which, uh, which didn't, uh, uh, which was not in line with what he thought. He mm. said, you, 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 you're, you're hurting the team by doing this. Another thing is, uh, as a chairman of the club and as a board of the club, you were never allowed to be near the dressing room because that is disturbing for players. And, um, and I remember when I was in the, in the Camp Nou where Johan Cruyff had been the, the, the trainer of Barcelona, he showed me around and all of a sudden I was walking in the corridor to the dressing room and there was a yellow line. So I asked, I said, what, what is this yellow line for? He said, this is the border. The border is allowed to come till this, uh, till, till this spot and he's not, they are not allowed to trespass the line. I don't want them near me. Wow. But at the same time, when we played a European match, and uh, on the match day, the trainer, Louis van Gaal, wanted me to be present at breakfast because I was representing the club. And by being present, I showed that the whole club was behind the team. Was united, yeah. Huh? Was united. Yeah, so un being united. Exactly. Being united, that makes a good team. Whether it is football, whether it is basketball, whether it is a company, that is the secret. Yeah. That is the secret. Be united mm -hmm. and have uh, all faces in the same direction. Yeah. Great. Great. Uh, thank you for the audience questions. I think we're going to ask a few more questions for now. Uh, but thank you for the audience questions. So, 
with all that experience, there is still one type of job that you did not get. It is the president of an international soccer association, both for UFA and FIFA. Yeah. If you were to run today, what would you do differently? What would I would diff do differently? Well, uh, at first, um, I tried to become the, the president of UEFA and, uh, and FIFA uh, because of circumstances. It was necessary that somebody stood up to change the fact that everybody is re-elected, 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 and that you never have a new face. And um, what I would have done differently is I would have taken more time. More now, time to more, more time, More time to travel around. Meet people? Or? Yeah, meet people. Because if you want to, if you want to, let, let's, let's take UEFA. UEFA has 51 members from Iceland to Kazakhstan. And if you really want to, to have a chance to win that election, you have, to be, you have to talk to people. You have to visit them. And not only once, but at least twice. And I only had time to visit only once and not everybody. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that is wrong. You need at least two years to prepare. And I didn't have the time and I didn't have the possibility to do that. Besides, um, also my age. I mean, uh, if, if I look at the, uh, when I tried to become the UEFA, I was 70. And that is, in my opinion, in the time in w where we are living, too old. I think it is very good to have um, young people who have a modern view, who live in the age, who have been gro uh, uh, grown up in, yeah. in the age that we live in. Yeah. They should be the leaders of, uh, of the future uh, the federations and the future uh, confederations like UEFA, and uh, but I can't change my age. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it, I was in a situation that Platini stepped down, unvolunteer, yeah. un unvolunteer, and, they said, uh, Infantino and, is I, and, I, and there was a gap, yeah. and I didn't want the chairman of of, uh, of Spain to become the, the president, because he, he he was in 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 the in, in the board of UEFA for 25 years, yeah. and he didn't even took the trouble to to so, learn English. Uh, both of your main competitors for the UEFA back then were Niersbach from the, the uh, Deutsche uh, Football Association and then, uh, of course, of Spain, of Villar. Uh, both of them later or at that point were being investigated. Yeah, so but uh, yeah, 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 but that. What does this say, did this say about the, the climate you were nah. in interacting in? The fact that Wolfgang has been investigated is so unfair. Okay. That, that but, but I mean, the, the, the question is not whether you agree with it or not. No, but in, in football, we see this yeah. a lot. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. The problem in football is that people don't say in your face, I don't vote for you. Mm. The problem is that everybody says, okay, yeah, of course, I'll follow you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I'll uh, support you. But then he got uh, 30 votes and, and people said, I voted for you. At the end of the day, they don't do it. Mm. And um, I always tell the story about Michel Platini. When he became the chairman of, uh, of the UEFA, he got 27 votes. Mm. And afterwards, people came to him to congratulate him. And there were 40 people telling yeah. him that they had voted for him. <laughs> so it is, it is they are not honest. Mm. It is, it is, it, that, was, th that is difficult. Yeah. And, and in order to, 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 to combat that, you need more time. Did uh, Prince Ali bin Hussein lie to you? Did he lie? No. Because you dropped out of the FIFA election, yeah, um, and you you talked with him before and then endorsed him, um, and you said that uh, I think it's in the book even that you said hey, uh, he said he had quite a substantial amount. Oh of yeah, 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 I don't know. He didn't. And, no. and l l later, it no, turned out he, to no, be no. In the first round, he had 78 votes. Yeah, yeah and and the, re the the reason why I stepped out mm. is that I only had been traveling two months. Mm. Because I didn't even plan to to go for the FIFA presidency, but I had no choice. Yeah, and and so I did it. I did it because uh, f five years ago I told Blatter that he should not be re-elected, mm. and he said, "Okay, this is my last gig, another four years, and then I stop." And then I found out that he wouldn't stop. Mm. And then I said, "Yeah, hey, wait a minute. Then I have to do something." So yeah, I, I will be his competitor. But Prince Ali had been traveling for two years. Yeah, and he visited all African countries, twice. So he had 
a big folder of, 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 of reports from all his meetings, and he had 60, 60 votes. Yeah. I had nothing. I only had a good feeling that Europe would support me. <laughs> and maybe a few guys from Suriname yeah. and Bonaire. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Uh, so the answer to your question is you need more time for this. Yeah. Yeah. But so that's why I said to the prince, you have 60 votes. I have only a good feeling. If I add Europe to these 60 votes, you have enough votes to win. So what is important? Did, did, did you genuinely is believe yeah, that? Is Michael, yeah, sure. Is Michael van Praag important? Or is it important that we get a new president? Mm. And I said it is important that we get a new president. Yeah. yeah. So I stepped down. Yeah. I and did, did he offer something in return? Yeah. What did he offer? No, I said, okay, I will return on the condition that you take at least 10 points out of my program and put it in your program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's but, what he did. But he didn't say like uh, you you get a position uh, as my advisor or no. uh, you get a seat no. there and there. The Kamer B will get this. That attitude is very common in uh, in uh, in football. Mm. Uh, you see it now also in FIFA that people who did something to help the new guy to become uh, yeah. become uh, become the president. The Norwegian uh, president who now is the strategic advisor of Infantino, for instance. Now. Uh, that is very common. Eh? I give you, uh, uh, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. That's mm. how the Americans say it. That's common. And we Dutch say, oh, oh wrong, wrong, wrong. We shouldn't do it. Yeah. But in yeah. the rest of the world, it's normal people. Uh, if you, if you, east from east, east from Germany, it already starts. In, in Belgium, in, yeah, in Belgium, it already starts. That people think different in the way you do business than. Than than, yeah. than, than, than than we do it. Uh, uh, in African countries, in Asian countries, I've I've been bi I've been doing business in Asia for years. Absolutely. Yeah. So I know exactly how these people are. They think we that we are crazy in Holland. Yeah. And but do you think after all these like scandals and repeated investigations, we will finally see a turning point right now in football, or is that yet to come? Well, I tell you something. The, re the t turning point is uh, is Gianni Infantino. I don't know why everybody is so against this this guy, but he has changed a lot in FIFA. I I, I dare to say that corruption is gone in FIFA. Corruption is gone, gone in FIFA. Corruption is gone in FIFA. Yeah, but oh. depends on what you call corruption, eh? Okay. Well, I am very interested in your definition of corruption now. Corruption is that that I pay you. Yeah to vote for me or to vote for an idea that I have of a proposal. That is corruption. And at this very moment in <coughs> FIFA, nobody does that. Yeah. End of the <laughs> interview, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he is speechless. Yeah, I dare to say that. I mean, of course, there are... Uh, okay. I'm not telling you... That, uh, wait, wait a minute. I yeah. don't know what is happening in federations, between federations, etc., etc. Mm. But what I do know is that, yeah. that Gianni Infantino changed the decision structure. Yeah. It is no longer possible that the board decides where the World Cup will be taken. Mm. That is done by the Congress. Yeah. The Congress is 211 countries or 215 countries. You, yeah. cannot, you cannot bribe 215 countries. But, uh, let but me Gianni, is not, Gianni Infantino is yeah. not giving money Okay, no. Club president. Uh, 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 but, but, but that happened if in we, the past. If we look at the last World Cup, which is only months yeah. uh, in the past, yeah. there was a campaign by Qatar. They spent 387 million on what? Not the organization of the World Cup, but on an intelligence operation in which they paid people to spy also on you. You were labeled a threat. I know. And then you say to me, at the next yeah, but, World but, Cup, but, but, uh, corruption will be but gone. Qatar is not FIFA. Eh? You say Qatar did it. They are very yeah. much part of the FIFA. I Sorry? Think. They are very much part of the FIFA. Yeah, wait yeah, a minute. Yeah, 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 no. yeah. If you mean the members of the FIFA, then I, I fully agree with you. Okay. But okay. we are talking, I'm talking about the management of FIFA. I'm talking mm -hmm. about the board of FIFA. I'm yeah. talking about Gianni Infantino. I... Dare to say that in, 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 in debt, there is no corruption anymore. Used to be, eh? 
mm. used to be. Mm. Because Qatar got the uh, World Cup mm. because Mr. Bim Hamam bribed a few board members. That's true. But they're all in jail. Mm. So I'm talking about the FIFA organization. Yeah. I don't, but there are members of, of, of FIFA who are, of course, corrupt. How did you feel when you read, I have been spied upon? Yeah, I, I, I had to laugh. To, to laugh? Wow. Yeah, to laugh, yeah. I think you're the first person well, you know, uh, that, that finds spying a laughing You see, I, I got, uh, in, in those days, uh, we found out because I looked it up and I talked to my former secretary. I had some strange ma emails mm. in those days that I neglected. Mm. We put, I didn't put it in the spam box, but I didn't open it or we didn't read. Even today I get them. You get them on your phone as well. Uh, spam, so don't read it. Yeah. Mm. And, but the, the, these were strange questions, yes, true. And uh, there was one of the guys who said, well, I can solve all your problems. And if, uh, and if uh, you come to me and if you pay this, I can make sure that, uh, that this and this and that will happen. Yeah, that happened. And, and, and uh, even my wife remembers that she got strange messages yeah. on her phone. But like with or, a, or strange, with a phone, or strange phone calls. That's true. Yeah. But I feel sorry for this country. But like w w with such a big budget, like a few hundred million, th you, th there must have been more than a few emails. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but but I was only a small person. I, I, yeah, but you were. But there, there, a but no, but there were board members of FIFA. Yeah. yeah of the big, uh, th that's what I read. Of the big associations, America, France, Germany, maybe England. Yeah, mm. they were really spied upon. Yeah, yeah. I'm just a, I'm just a sm small country who said I'm I'm against the the World Cup in Qatar, so I was not an important person. Okay. But get me right, eh? Mm. Sure. Uh, in in a, a lot of members uh, uh, of FIFA, I would say, uh, I doubt it if uh, it's uh, uh, there is absolutely corruption. Mm. That uh, in African countries, in some Asian countries, sure. But we. Would but in the FIFA organization itself, yeah, over, and that is what Johnny did, and did that's why I don't understand why everybody is so critical on this guy. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't choose Qatar. Eh? He was not even in FIFA. He was. He was general uh, general uh, general secretary yeah. of UEFA when Qatar was elected. Did he maybe give the World Cup for clubs to uh, Saudi Arabia? Yeah, but he doesn't give anything. Every member in the world but he, he of the FIFA... But he was part of that decision, right? No, there is no, nothing has been decided. No. Okay. No, 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 no. You read the wrong newspaper. Nothing. You, uh, no, any, any recommendations? Listen. No, 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 no listen. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Tell me. No, I read them. I read them all. No, I was just joking. I'm not okay. exclusive. Okay. Here. I'm trying to be funny. Sorry, but don't take it personally. But listen. Yeah. Every member in the FIFA mm. has the same right to apply for a tournament. Holland, Belgium, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, etc. And they all, some of them do, the majority do. They have the right to apply to bring in a bid. But then people are going to, 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 to study the bid and then there will be a proposal. There's a, fi there will, there's a FIFA council who can say, hey, uh, 30 people, what they think about it. And then the proposal is brought to the Congress. And there the Congress chooses between Saudi Arabia or other countries, not Gianni Infantino. Mm -hmm. But Gianni Infantino is not in the position to say to uh, Saudi Arabia, you are not allowed to, to, to put in a bid. No, he can't say that because they are a member. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no. Very interesting thoughts. I would be uh, against, yeah. don't get me wrong, <coughs> mm. yeah. what I find spicy and what I don't understand. And, and here there is something that, uh, that, that is a little bit critic from my side. Um, they have allowed Saudi Arabia uh, Tourist Board to become the sponsor of the Women's World Cup. Mm. And that is something I don't understand. Yeah, because, because of the women's because rights. The, 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 yeah. the women's rights uh, in, in, in Saudi Arabia are, of course, uh, there are no rights. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. put it this way. So yeah. how can you, how can you uh, accept the tourist board of Saudi Arabia 
to come uh, because homosexual people do you think they can visit uh, Saudi Arabia not safely no of not course safely, not no so how, how 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 can you invite it, the tourist board of Saudi Arabia as the main sponsor of women's football yeah I think it's only two years that a, that a woman is allowed to drive a car yeah no of, yeah. Course, of course okay huh? maybe the, the quick um, uh, ending question which we are way ahead uh, of time or uh, over time at this yeah. moment um, we have, I think, painted, painted some some problems. You 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 were there hey, when Johan Cruyff came up, and uh, I think he was the first Dutch player who had like a real a brand deal. And after that, I think hey, uh, we are now in a world where Saudi Arabia is, is sponsoring uh, uh, soccer, uh, and the Euro and the Super League is being announced. Um, do you see any way going forward in which? Uh, soccer will reclaim its identity. I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, if you look in the world, uh, we had an issue with uh, with uh, the Germans who were complaining that I uh, didn't openly support their bid for the uh, World Cup, their uh, the the European. Uh, the yeah, European, and then they the lobbied Czech Mark Rutte to... And then they lobbied Mark Rutte. Yeah. And Mark Rutte said, sorry, this is something for the Football Federation. Don't talk to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even talk to them what they should do. That's up to them. But, but, in the majority of countries in the rest of the world, mm -hmm. you will see that if they go to the president of a country, mm -hmm. the president will interfere. Yeah, uh, we we see that very often. We have seen that even with uh, with Qatar, yeah, at Sarkozy, Russia, uh, yeah, Russia. Uh, I th I think in the book your wife says um, Mutko from Russia was being congratulated when Infantino got the job, but Mutko wasn't running. No, he wasn't running. But but you see, um, and and then th and then you say in the book, I think, uh, or people said to me that Vladimir Putin had interfered. No, yeah, they <laughs> it is, it's very interesting. Um, uh, some 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 countries are very influential, and there's nothing against it. And mm. Russia is very uh, very influential in football, n no problem. Mm. Uh, but um, in those days, I remember when I was running for uh, for president, and it shows how it has nothing to do with Mr. Putin, eh, because you're from Russia. So it, it is. Uh, I'm, I'm not. G I'm not going give any, any opinion about Mr. Putin, but I'm going to tell you a, a nice story. What happened, which shows that leaders of countries, and there are more, yep. can be influential on football. I'm sure that uh, uh, Obama also received people in order to support the uh, the American bid. Huh? He did. Uh, yeah, he did. And, uh, and there are more presidents who do that. What do you think of Berlusconi in Italy? <laughs> eh, to give you an example. <laughs> the owner of AC Milan. The owner, yes. the owner yes. of AC Milan. But there are presidents in, in, in countries who, uh, who all of a sudden remove the whole board of a federation. Mm. Now, in, in Western Europe, uh, uh, that, that would be impossible. But um, in, um, in, in some countries, well. But uh, talking about uh, uh, about uh, uh, Mr. Putin, yeah, he is influential, and, and Russia is also influential in football. And I remember that I was running for the FIFA president mm. presidency. I got in. I, I was in, uh, advised to contact uh, Mr. Putin in order to uh, get Russia to support me. That 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 has that has nothing to do with Mr. Putin. Yeah, but b because there have also been people asking me. Why don't you contact that president of that country because that he um, can help you? Uh, I also read uh, that, but that, 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 that. I think people, that was. People asked you why don't you contact the son-in-law of Putin because he lives in Amsterdam. Yeah, because I said, yeah, Mr. Putin, do you really think that I can call him? No, I don't have his number. And by the way, how should I do that? Oh, you you go to the ambassador of the country. Mm -hmm. The same goes for another country. Yeah, it's the same thing happened. Yeah, and. Um, and then there was one other guy said, why don't you contact the son-in-law of Mr. Putin? Yeah. Because he married to uh, his wife. Mr. Faas. Yeah. Okay. But that is a nice proposal. But 
I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And, and that has nothing to do with Mr. Putin. That has nothing to do with the president of that other country. That has to do with my reputation. Yeah, you wanted yeah. to protect that. I'm not, go I'm not going to spoil my reputation uh, uh, in order to get elected or something. Yeah. Yeah. That people afterwards can say, yeah, but he did this or but he did that. Clear choice. Your, your reputation, sorry that I do, but I mean yeah. all of you, is the, the, the most precious thing you have in world. And also to get, when you, when you start working after you study, make sure that you have a, a reputation of credibility and of good manners and trustworthy. That is how you come far. You certainly have. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, uh, presence here. We really enjoyed this interview. We are way over time. That's a very good sign. Uh, I would like to thank the audience for being here today. We are uh, currently hiring, so if you think, wow, uh, seems great, please apply. Uh, and, um, There's a leaflet on the table. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I saw uh, it already. <laughs> yeah. And with that, let's give a warm round of applause to Thank Mr. Van Prague. Thank you for being here. <laughs>